Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. Welcome back to another episode of Hard Times, where I explore food and recipes from times of scarcity and difficulty. So today I'm going to be exploring more of the latter half of that definition of hard times. It's going to be more about times of difficulty rather than scarcity. If you've missed my hard time series, by the way, I will put the playlist up above and down below. Lots of very interesting foods and of course history. So a couple weeks ago, our Aunt Susie invited myself and my family up to her place to pick wild blueberries. And Aunt Susie is an amazing human being. She appreciates old things, doing things the old fashioned way. And she has a wonderful collection of things, things that I've never seen before, including this. Isn't this spectacular? What is this? It is a very heavy object. So this is a Columbia meat juice press. It was made in the late 1800s. If you were affluent, there's a good chance that you owned one of these because this is used to make meat juice that is used for those that are infirm or for invalids. So if those that were very weak or very sick, meat juice was given as a way to give them strength. Typically beef would be used to create a very, very strong, strong extract of beef to give nutrition to those that were very sick or weak. It's made out of cast iron, and I believe originally it was covered with nickel. So the way this works is that you twist this, and this is a press, and you remove this, and this is what it looks like inside. It's a bit like a lemon or a citrus reamer, and you place your meat inside there, place this on top, and then just crank this down until you could extract every drop of that precious liquid out, and then you would serve that to your sick person. Now, in order to find a recipe for this is quite exciting. I recently made it to the New York Academy of Medicine where I met librarian Arlene, who was absolutely wonderful. If you're ever in New York along the Museum Mile, go check out that area if you're at all interested in medicine or food for that matter, because they have over 10,000 volumes of books related to cookery because there's this huge overlap between healing and food and medicine, right? No brainer. Since the beginning of time, we've been trying to heal ourselves with food and the New York Academy of Medicine has a wonderful collection. So I got in touch with Arlene and she very quickly gave me a couple references to making beef juice, beef tea, beef broth, goes by many different names and apparently there are different types. So beef broth is just kind of more what we think of when we think of beef broth. But beef juice or beef extract is what was used to make this, which is a very concentrated beef extract. So I'm going to make the beef extract or beef juice, but I'm also going to be making a beef tea because I just thought it was so interesting in the methodology and the technique to make it. First, I'm going to show you how I made the beef tea and then I'm going to go ahead and do the extract. So this recipe for beef tea comes from Fanny Farmer's book, Food and Cookery for the Sick and Convalescent. It was written in 1912 and, and Arlene sent me a link to a digitally scanned copy of this book and I will put the link to that down below if you are interested. The cut of meat that you would use would be something very, very lean. You don't want a lot of fat, something like a eye of round or a rump roast. And to prepare the beef tea is quite interesting. What you do is you take your steaks and you're gonna cut them into small pieces. You could even grind it if you like. Then place your meat, I'm using a half pound, divide that between two mason jars. It's important that they be heat proof because we're gonna be cooking with these. And then we're gonna add a quarter cup of water to each cup, cover them and let them sit for about 20 minutes. Then we're gonna place the jars into a pot. We're gonna fill it with water to about three quarters to the top of the jars. We're gonna bring this to a boil and then reduce the heat onto a low, low simmer and allow this to simmer for two hours. So that's what I've done here. Here are my two jars of beef tea. These are still warm and because I heated it up and let it cool, it's actually vacuum sealed. You can hear the suck. Hear that? And there is beef juice. Oh, it actually smells very nice. Very familiar. Soup, it smells like soup. So this was cooked at a relatively high temperature. So the meat kind of coagulated and we have these little bits down below. With this other method for the extract, we're not gonna actually have the meat cooked at such a high temperature. So we're not gonna get these little coagulated bits. I think that's important to note because this is again, what makes beef tea different than say a beef extract. So we're gonna strain this, get quite a bit of soup. So we get kind of a milky soup here. Now we're gonna add a bit of salt for seasoning. 
And that's our result of two hours of cooking a beef tea. Alrighty, let's give this a taste. Here we go. Itadakimasu. Wow. That is very strong and concentrated. It has a bit of a heme taste to it, a little bit of fat on top, but it is very beefy and cooked. It's very nourishing though, kind of similar to chicken soup. Very, very concentrated, meaty flavor. And quite nice, but very rich. I think a little goes a long way. It definitely needs salt though. Hmm. Pretty good. It does leave a little bit of kind of a metallic irony flavor in your mouth. Not quite livery or gamey, but kind of along those lines. But a little goes a long way with this tea. And as you can probably imagine, if you're really sick, you probably don't have much of an appetite. So something like this, a small bowl of something warm, nourishing, concentrated, would be really, really important as a means to getting well. Now that we've tried the beef tea, let's go ahead and make our beef extract. So it says to warm up the press by pouring some hot water over it. So I'm gonna do that. And the recipe that I'm gonna be using today for the beef extract comes from an 1887 volume written by Thomas J. Murray. Again, I'll put a link to a digital scan of that book down below. Here I use the same cut of meat. This is, I have round four slices of it, and it said to either singe the meat or place it under the broiler for about three or four minutes. So this is not 100% cook, and we don't want anything to coagulate. So in the 1887 book, it says to shred it with a knife, and I'm not exactly sure how you shred it. And then in the Fanny Farmer book, it says just to gash it. So I think that's what I'm gonna do, gash it. And if we gash it, you can see inside that it is still a little bit pink in there. I'm gonna take my press out of the hot water. Whoa! Okay, now we're gonna pat our press dry. It is very hot. And we're gonna place the cup down below. Take my meat and place it in here. Put two pieces, I cut it down so it would fit this part back on top. And now we're gonna crank it down. So cool. <laughs> gonna crank this down all the way. Ooh, can you hear that? <gasps> this is so hot. Some interesting sounds there. <sighs> the meat's actually coming up through the top here. <laughs> and here are the juices. Oh my gosh, look at that. That was very bloody. This is almost a raw beef extract. Okay, that's as far as it's gonna go. As opposed to the beef tea where we had about a cup of soup or juice, this is just about maybe a teaspoon or a tablespoon of the beef extract. Some hot water. And warm our extract into the warm water. Now there's not much in there, and it says specifically in the recipe not to heat this up too much. We do want to serve it warm, but we don't want any coagulation to happen. <laughs> Alrighty, let's give this a taste. It said also this could be salted as well, so just the tiniest little pinch of salt. All right, see that? <laughs> Here we go, cheers. Wow, that is very different than the beef tea, but similar. Now, if I thought that was hemi, this is something else. This is very, very hemi and very concentrated, but not unpleasant, and it's actually very nice. Intensely steaky and juicy of meat and it coats your mouth with this kind of irony, a little bit sweet though, surprisingly, and that salt is essential. It's very nice. I don't think I've ever had anything like that before. It's just so intensely beef, 
but that makes sense because we just squoozed it so hard out of that piece of steak. Amazing. Yes. Makes me feel a little bit vampirish. Yeah. I'm gonna drink it all. And it's delicious. It's very warm. That nice bit of salt in there makes it very savory. And that concentrated intensity just makes you feel vigorous. <laughs> it really does. Again, for those that are so weak that they're unable to actually chew or cut up their food, this is just a little bit of nutrition in a very concentrated amount. I can see the logic behind it. Alrighty, so there you have it. Beef extract for invalids made with an 1800s meat press. Absolutely incredible. Big thanks to Aunt Susie for loaning this little gadget to me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I hope you guys learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media. Like, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo. Take care. Bye.